Hey Internet, welcome to another episode of Mr. Ford's Guide to the A-plus Certification Exam. In this video, it's going to be a short one, we're going to talk about the difference between 32 and 64-bit computing. Alright, welcome back. Like I said, this is not going to be a long video uh, because we're going to talk about 64-bit and 32-bit and other videos as we talk about the types of chips, all that good stuff. But if you recall from an earlier video, we talked about the registers within the chip and how the registers were the work tables for the computer. It was where it chunked information. It's how it worked with things internally. Um, well, the registers are what determines if it's a 32-bit chip or a 64-bit chip. So if it's got 32 bits to work with, it's a 32-bit chip. If it's got 64, you get the point, okay? So here's a little fun fact, by the way. Intel introduced the 32-bit architecture back in 1985. It took 10 years for Microsoft to create a true 32-bit operating system. Now, just because Intel and AMD release a new revolutionary processor doesn't mean we get to enjoy the benefits of said processor. It takes a while for other things to catch up in order to work with um, that processor. In fact, I think I remember a story about how Intel had to, had to actually downgrade a CPU because none of the motherboards would work with a newer version at the time. Anyhow, uh, back in the lore of computing there. So not only did it take 10 years for Microsoft to create a 32-bit operating system, it took another six years for 32-bit computing to gain wide use amongst both consumers and businesses. I think the federal government is finally on 32-bit computing. Wah, wah. Uh, all kidding aside, uh, for those of you who follow me, you know that I used to work for the FBI and uh, other government agencies. Bum, bum, bum. And I started working for the FBI in 2009, and my computer had Windows 2000 on it. Yeah, we got upgraded, though, to Windows XP. <laughs> Anyhow, but the future, except in the government, belongs to 64-bit computing. That's where we're at, folks. Nowadays, we're in 64-bit computing. Now, you're still going to run a 32-bit. 32-bit's going to be around for a long time, okay? At least 50 years, again, with the federal government. <laughs> Sorry, just keep hitting that dead horse there. Um, but Windows XP and I'm using Windows XP loosely here, uh, was the first version of Windows to deal with 64-bit. Uh, Didn't do a good job of it, actually. But it acknowledged there was 64-bit, and they released a version of Windows XP. I, it was a patch, more or less. Um, we also have Windows Vista. We won't talk about Windows Vista. Windows 7 actually was one of my favorite Windows operating systems. Think they should have stopped there. But then we have Windows 8, and they supported Windows. Uh, they supported 64-bit. And now we have Windows 10, which also supports 64-bit. Now, here's the cool thing, by the way, if you weren't aware of this. Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, and even the new sexy Windows 10 support 32-bit processing. Um, one of the big things with the desktop computing, one of the huge things with Intel and Microsoft is they have to be backwards compatible. Now, I'm recording on a Mac. Apple, you know, Apple doesn't have to be backwards compatible. Apple is Apple. When Apple says, this is what we're going to do, Apple basically says, hey, if you want to stay with Apple, get on board or get off the Apple train. Uh, but with the PC world, you have to know, uh, understand that PCs are running businesses, they're running governments, they're in schools, and so you have to be backwards compatible, um, which I think in some ways almost holds up the advances in PCs, but that's beside the point. So that's it for 32-bit versus 64-bit computing. Hopefully you learned something. If you have not subscribed yet, do it now, please. Anyways, be sure to like. And uh, until our next video, which is going to be on virtualization, <laughs> fun studying up there and goodbye for now.